we got down to around 20 degrees Fahrenheit. I have to stress Fahrenheit. So some people who live in civilized nations where they use Celsius, we got down to 20 degrees Fahrenheit the past few nights, which if you're not, most of you, like you're up there in like Wisconsin, Minnesota, you're, you're like, Oh, that's not so bad. eh?" And they're like, Oh, that's June. Yeah. But we're here in South Carolina. We're technically in a subtropical climate. It's not supposed to do that. It can, but it's not really supposed to do that. It got so cold. The internet stopped working. Wow. I want you to just appreciate. All right. I realize a lot. And this is like, I, this never happens elsewhere because I used to live in like Illinois and there were times I would go out and my door on my truck was frozen shut, but I still had damn internet. Yeah. Like last week here, it got down to negative 10. The reason why is just very basic thermodynamics. Um, when something is warm, it expands. When something is cold, it contracts. And what this means is somewhere along the cable that go from my house all the way to the signal box and the, and the hub and then the junction and all that stuff, somewhere between here and there, someone did not screw something down properly to the point that when the cable is warm, there's no problem. But when it's contracts just enough to lose connection and screw up the internet. <laughs> that's, but here's the, here's the, here's the part that's just mind blowing. It we sucks had, when the guy doesn't screw things right. And then the shrinkage kicks in. In your end. Of it. Um, but here's the kicker tomorrow. It's going to be 65 Fahrenheit. And by Friday, it's going to be 74 with a thunderstorm. Now, I understand weather is not climate and whatnot, but I do have to say, within the space of a week in January, yeah. that's a wee bit yeah. concerning. That's, it's, it's, that's pretty standard for Colorado. Like, the last couple of days, it's been like 55. Um so I took advantage of that to take down my Christmas decorations outside, um, which is not as late as you're all about to say, because in Denver, the tradition is you leave up your Christmas lights until the end of the national stock show. The what? January, they have, yeah, they have the national stock show. There's rodeos, livestock things, you know, it's a big, they literally in like Metro Denver, the stock show kicks off. With a parade of longhorn cattle down the street in like the city part of the city. There's and it something... closes with whatever whatever the best in show steer is at the stock show goes to literally the fanciest hotel in Denver for high tea. There is something so uniquely American about the official end of the holiday season being determined by a rodeo. Yep. Is Colorado farm country? Yeah. Colorado's ranch country. Uh, a lot of big cattle ranches here. The Western ranching wars and all the stupid shit. Yeah, I have, I have moved to the West. And I forget that sometimes until there's a Longhorn Parade down a city street. Surprise, like, oh, that's right. I moved to the West. <sighs> All right. Well, last week was a little bit mild. This week is getting a bit more spicy. Um, that we, 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 we literally ran out of, I mean, not ran out. We had too many stories this week. I had to, to sip through and cut a few because we had too many that were just, yeah. It's one of those weeks. Nothing exploded, but anyway, let's get that intro rolling. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call 
What the fuck is wrong with you? Crazy. We're going to begin. This is one of those fads I do not understand. Are you familiar with these Stanley Cups? Yes. This is a thing. I think it's what started on TikTok or some shit. Where supposedly yeah. this is like somehow the greatest beverage cup ever. Except they're not. Here's the thing. I own one. I had a friend who didn't want her. She gave it to me. They're not. They leak. If you tip it over, it's going to spill everywhere. I use a different brand. I won't say it because you're not getting paid. Um, but they're half the price and they're much better and they don't leak. The, well, but, uh, but yeah, the Stanley, it's just the thing. It's the trendy thing. It's the water tumbler. Yeah, it's it's All entirely cool have. it's entirely based on height. It is. It's. Yes. Do you remember Tamagotchis? It's kind of like that. You don't remember Tamagotchis. Yeah, or like when I was in high school, you had to have a champion sweatshirt or you may as well not show up. Now champion sweatshirts like that. And I, the, all the kids, all the kids are like, you get those at Walmart. They were $50 when I was in high school. I had a member's it was a big jacket. Deal. Does that count? It's just the new champion sweatshirt. Well, this, I think we're hitting the crescendo of, uh, this little fad. Woman accused of stealing $2,500 worth of these Stanley Cups and the pictures. Wow, that's like, that's like 10 of them. <laughs> I mean, they're fucking overpriced. They are incredibly overpriced. Like, there have been like fucking people like you think it was Black Friday all over again in the Target trying to get there the damn There have been things. like fist fights in Target because they released special pink ones. Yeah, it's it's and it's, they leak. And they leak. Um get off my screen. You're taking up too much real estate. Anyway. Um so let's see here. Bring it up here so I can read it. Uh, Roseville police said employee of a store saw a woman taking a shopping cart full of mugs without paying for them. She allegedly refused to stop for employees and threw the mugs in her car before driving off. Now, just to start with, the sheer fucking audacity. She did, she actually did, she shoplifted, I guess if you want to say the correct way, just walk out, they're not allowed to stop you. She did the Harley Quinn method. I'm not shopping at this store. I'm robbing it. <laughs> um. Now, then, of course, what happened is they called the cops on you, so you better make sure you get away really quickly. She didn't. Officers eventually yeah. spotted the woman's car and pulled her over. That's when police say they found 65 Stanley mugs stuffed in the car's trunk and passenger side footwell. Display the cups all over the cruiser. Uh, while Stanley quenchers are all the rage, we strongly advise against turning to crime to fill your hydration habits. Well, you think you're funny there, but no, this is about, you know, just scalping. Man, like, is it just me or and here's me being an old man going off on a rant. Is it just me or in the last few years has scalping of physical goods like shot way yeah. up? Like it started in the pandemic. And people have just decided that's a way of life. It's like it, right. it's like the fucking road warrior out there and shit. The problem is everybody needs a side hustle now. Right? Because jobs jobs don't think they have to pay you money. No. So that's everybody so. needs nobody's allowed to have a hobby. What breaks my heart is no one's allowed to have a hobby anymore. Like the second you're good at something, people start giving you shit about monetizing it. Wow, what a pretty painting. Are you going to sell those on Etsy? Oh, I'm taking a pottery class. Are you going to sell them? Like you can't just do anything because you enjoy it anymore. Because we're all struggling to fucking survive. <sighs> like once upon a time, you did this show for fun. <laughs> Uh, 
Those were the days. But yeah, so now people just buy stuff to resell it. And I don't understand the market. Like, I guess if you can't find it anywhere else, maybe you'll pay three times the cost, but... The only one who is going to be paying for these cups are incredibly stupid people. It's not even an iPhone. It's a cup. Like, I could kind of... what we do on this show every week, right? Yeah, yeah. Incredibly stupid people are not in short supply. They are not. I mean, I can understand like an iPhone. Remember when iPhones were kind of a status symbol? They've kind of like, you know, it's, it's yeah. calmed down a bit. But I can understand that because at least the iPhone did something that no other object yeah, could so. do. It's a cup. We invented those in saying, the like, Stone Age. I mean, it is. It does keep your water cold for like 12 hours. but. There are cups that do the same thing for much less money. I have several of them. This one's got the yeah. whole vacuum seal around the edges. It, this this is beautiful. I love it. Keeps my 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 water like there, cold and carbonated. There are several Great. different brands of tumbler that will do the same thing for you. <laughs> they just don't have the little logo on it. Let's go from one baffling crime to another. I don't even know what they arrested this kid for. That is how baffling this crime is. You think we had invented all the crime by now? No. No, someone has got to come up with a new one. We've invented a new crime. Teen faces charges for allegedly taping fish to ATMs. I mean, why would that be illegal? Well, because it's a biohazard for one thing. A raw fish, just a raw fish just strapped to a fucking thing where you have to. Yeah, it's not it's not healthy. In some places, you pay double for that. <laughs> Salt Lake City, a teenager's in, in hot water. In some places, you shove that up your urethra. <laughs> a teenager's in hot water after allegedly taping fish to ATMs in Provo. And documenting the antics on social media. Now, to be fair, it is Salt Lake City. What else the fuck are you going to do there? Um, among the displays posted online was a video that appeared to show three trout taped to a police car. <laughs> Provo Police Department said Thursday there were roughly 13 instances where the 17-year-old taped fish to ATMs and other objects. The fishy displays were shared on Instagram. Uh, an account titled Fish Bandit 84. The account has more than 52,000 followers. So, wait, 52. So you're telling me all this time, all I had to do was go out and tape a fish to an ATM. That's it. That's, That's double all my TikTok follower count. That's all there was to it. Just go and tape a fish. I mean, presumably you'd have to catch the fish, right? I don't think there's a lot of fish markets in Provo. According to police, teenagers facing two charges of property damage to refer to juvenile justice and youth services. The two charges stem from the cost of cleanup. I mean, they are really struggling to Come find on now. I mean. The only reason they did that was because there is no law that says it's it's the air bud rule. There's no law that's there's no rule that says a dog can't play basketball. See, now for all for all the little shits on YouTube actually hurting people. This is a prank. This is yeah, this is a prank. This is this is a prank. Nobody got hurt. Everybody got a little bit of what the fuck in their day. <laughs> and we all moved on with our lives. I mean. I guess I can't say nobody got hurt because the fish are all dead. Now, now, if you were in the mafia, and the, you fish, have to, the fish didn't make it. If you were in the mafia and you happened to stop by an ATM on, on like your, your coffee break or whatever, you would be really, really, really just you'd come back. Yo, boss, yo, boss. Especially hey. considering if you're in the mafia Luca and you live in no. Provo, you're already in witness protection. That's true. Yeah, it's, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, shit, they found me. They gave me egg noodles and you're, ketchup. You're Steve Martin in My Blue Heaven. <laughs> God, you just movie lines are coming. It rattles around the head like Pac-Man. 
It's not a prank. The fish entrails could cause damage to the st- touch screens. Well, there weren't any entrails because the fish were fish. intact. It's, there's no. It's, he it's, didn't it's, cut them open. The cop, I could see the and cop also, just sitting there. Like, like they're wet, but it's an outdoor ATM. Which means presumably there's rain sometimes. I could just imagine the cop sitting there with his phone out going, are we sure this isn't illegal? What the fuck do we charge him with? It's a fucking, what do we charge him with? I hope I, I, I'm baffled by this, but I hope he doesn't stop because you'll fuck it. Have fun. Well, it's a fish. Great. I mean, I want to know where he's getting the fish. This guy, however, this one, this guy can go fuck himself. All right. Have you ever been out and about and found someone's phone? Just they, they accidentally left their phone behind. No, actually. Never done that? I have. Mm-hmm. What's no. Well, even if you did, what would you do if you found someone's phone laying around? Try and figure out how to get it back to them. Right. That's the the, the normal the normal thing would be I would like take it to a cashier or a lost and found right. or you know whatever See if you can unlock it then if they have a lock on it bring it to somebody the next rung down would be keep it for your own damn self which is that is a crime but that's that's for that is still what i would think of as within the realms of normal expected responses of expect yeah this dude said no 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 I am, I am going, I'm going for it. TikTok, TikTok, man finds cell phone in Walmart bathroom, calls in bomb threat with it. Honestly, I was worried he was going to shove it up his butt, so I'm a little relieved. (laughs) That's where I thought this was ending. A Florida man found a bomb in the bathroom of a Walmart and proceeded to call in a bomb threat. Now, the man, 28-year-old Cody J. Clements, is facing a false report about planting a bomb or weapon of mass destruction. Charlie County Sheriff's Office received a call Friday from a man who said there was a bomb at the local neighborhood Walmart in Port Charlotte. Now, I wanted I want to just point out what happened. Re- try to make this make sense in your head. Dude goes to take a piss. I hear cats. Um, find, oh, it's my, it's my feeder. Finds a phone in the bathroom, right? Calls in a bomb threat to the building he's standing in. Yeah. Like, already they can trace your location on the phone, right? But you are just like, oh, it's a Walmart. It's the Walmart. It's fucking the Walmart. It's good. Deputy search the store. And... I don't know if they can, though, because it, not to be morbid, but like when I had to call 911 for Dan, they still had to ask me my address. Oh, they do that just to be safe. But they, if they oh, have okay. to, if they have to, they can bounce it off the cell towers. And they can try, they can figure out where you are. They can track your phone. Okay. I mean, if, if they really have to, but it, it's extra effort, but they can do it. Um, okay. Deputy searched the store and talked to the owner of the phone who said he had left it in the bathroom and saw 911 calling him on his Bluetooth watch that is connected to his phone. He then pinged his phone to reveal the stall in which he left it. Surveillance video showed the owner of the phone entering and exiting the bathroom. Shortly before the bomb threat, then a man later identified as Clements walked into the bathroom, was in the facility when the bomb threat call came in. Why? What in the entire? Yeah, well, this is not a prank. No, this is a federal offense, quite literally. Also, this is you fucking up your own day because presumably you're at the Walmart for something. Right? You want to purchase something, I imagine, or well, even stop at, what do they have, Subway in there? Get that charming haircut you have? I don't know. <laughs> but you're at the Walmart for a reason. Well, now like, it's now it's closed. And if they evacuate the Walmart, 
you are also going to have to leave. You know, th there is there is this this principle in solving crimes and detective work, and what it, one of the principles is who benefits. Y you look and see yes. who benefits. That's one of those 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 fundamental bedrock concepts of crime solving that's supposed to lead you to a suspect and eventually solve the crime. And then there's this shit. Like it's. This is this is the equivalent. I mean, why? Why? Of all the things, it, 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 you know, you could have just called Stern. You could. Is Stern still on? Right? Is Stern still on? He's on like satellite now. Could you just like go just a Baba Booey, Baba Booey? You could just just fucking call Stern. <laughs> it's not illegal to call you Stern. You could have prank called the Walmart. You could have called the wall. Ask them if they have Prince Albert in a can. Actually, I don't think they, ask they, they, them they, if tobacco. They don't have that, do they? No. Ask them if the refrigerators are running. Yeah. Don't threaten to blow the place up. Why did just good God? And I'm not saying actually, you know what? Don't do that. Don't prank call the Walmart because if the people yeah, like the people don't. working at Walmart, their life sucks enough. They don't get yeah, paid enough. They, do not get they paid work enough. at Walmart. Don't don't do that to them. Okay. Uh next up is we're or, or prank call the Walmart and specifically ask for a manager and then bother them. <laughs> prank call the corporate number. We got more Florida. And this one's so dumb, it fucking hurts. It really does. Like, I've had to go in for a piss test for, for works before for a job. I do not fuck around with that shit. You know, you take that kind of seriously. What in the fuck were you thinking? Oh, the headline. The headline. You're in big oh, trouble now. Facing drug <laughs> test, suspect tried to pass off dog waste. Oh, oh. In a monumentally moronic scheme, a woman admitted that she plotted to submit dog urine she had, quote, collected in an attempt to cheat a court-ordered drug screening. According to investigators, Jessica Beatty, 42, was subject to random testing as a stipulation of uh, release terms related to a December 28th arrest for possession of drug paraphernalia and driving with suspended license. Uh, Beatty, a Clearwater, Florida, I used to fucking live there, resident, was a uh, has a lengthy rap sheet with numerous cocaine convictions and related incarceration terms. Free on her own recognizance following last month's arrest, Beatty had an appointment Thursday to pee in a cup at the county's misdemeanor probation unit. The test designed to detect the presence of chemical substances or controlled substances. Beatty apparently uh, was concerned that her urine would turn up dirty, and such finding a uh, such a finding likely resulted in a bond revocation and her immediate jailing. So Beatty showed up with a fraudulent urine sample, and this provision of urine is visually monitored by a probation officer making it difficult to hoodwick investigators. When confronted about the phony sample, Beatty reportedly admitted that she, quote, collected urine from her aunt's dog, which she intended to provide to testing. And the story goes on to note, it's a very important point here. One of the basic aspects of the test is it can tell the difference between human and non-human urine it's it's like right down right like bottom rung of what it can figure they are not in fact all the same um partially because i don't i don't know if y'all know this you eat very different things yeah. than your pets and they have and, different uh, yeah different makeup what was she expecting well yeah. the good news is it doesn't test positive for cocaine. The bad news is you're having puppies. So 
The I, other thing is, if they watch you provide the sample, they're going to expect that sample to be real hot. You know, Fresh urine is hot. It will steam in the cold. You know what I blame this on? And I probably should because it's probably completely unrelated. You ever seen Gattaca? Old movie. Jude Law. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Guy is trying to pretend to be someone else genetically, and he has to use all this. And he's got this setup. I can up. tell you the exact moment that movie lost me. Which one? The exact moment that movie lost me is when he's in a car and they're doing retinal scans, and he does this, and in one swift motion takes out two contact lenses. <laughs> I wear contact lenses. Absolutely yeah, not. Yeah, that's yeah, that's not. I did. Yeah, it's not how that works. It's more like. And I, I got, I got long nails now, yeah. so it's like you look like a freaking goober. Take my eyeball with it. Mm. I don't want to like blind mag myself trying to get these things out. I just <sighs> and she's got the mugshot that says exactly. Yep, this is what I got caught for. That's that is exactly. Yeah. That is exactly what that well, mugshot says. Well, I tried. Like, sometimes we have these crimes where you're like super smart up to a point and then it's incredibly stupid. It's like a roller coaster. It's like you can hear the wheels are turning. Tick, 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 tick. I'm having an idea. I'm having an idea. And it's a fucking idiot idea. Whee yeah. <sighs> Next stop. The article is also weirdly hung up on how she collected the dog samples. Yeah, it's, it's pretty it's easy. Like, it's it's like you've never had a pet. You've never had to get a sample. Dogs with one leg up in the air. All you got to do is hold a cup. Yeah, you, I've had to collect like urine samples for dogs to take to the vet before. It's It, you, it would it's, be much more difficult, actually, to collect a cat urine sample because they pee hot, in a sandbox. Two words. Hydrophobic litter. <laughs> Which is tricky when you have three of the motherfuckers and you only want, yeah. you have enough hydro, you need one of them to use it. Just the anyway. Although actually they wanted a urinalysis on Peggy at her last annual and they actually just put a little syringe into her bladder and they ended up doing that to themselves. Grady. Yeah, they ended up doing that to Grady. Was and I was, I was like, how am I going to get a urine sample out of a litter box? And they were like, oh, that's stupid. No, we're going to just, we're just going to get it. At least Grady Peggy didn't appreciate it. Well, but, they know. they put Grady under. He, he was already under for his teeth when they did it last time. But anyway, okay. Next up, this is St. Louis. I'm. I want to say this seems familiar. I do. It feels familiar, but I don't think it is. I'm going to have to Google this real fast because it feels like this is familiar. God knows the chat loses their shit if we ever do a repeat. Let's see. Which, I don't know if y'all know, like, we've been doing, what, 12 years now we've been doing this? Something like that? Yeah. And we don't keep a spreadsheet. So okay, yeah, there was there. This is the first time I can find reporting on this. I'm looking for it. I was under news. Let's see, a couple weeks back. Yeah, yeah, nothing. Yeah, okay. So, it but it still somehow feels familiar, which is weird. It kind of says how much we have to deal with this shit. It's fucking weird. Loud sex noises lead to St. Louis robber getting busted. Marion Jones's penchant for porn directly led to his arrest. In October 2021, 49-year-old Marion Jones robbed a Foot Locker store in, Saint, in South St. Louis. He might have gotten away with his crime if only to use some earbuds or not watched porn in his car outside a Waffle House. 
Robbery began when Jones' accomplice, Demetrius Kirksey, wow, that's a name, uh, pointed a handgun at the employee of the store sh- of the shoe store, um, telling him, back up, back up, I'll shoot you. Jones stole shoes, while Kirksey stole $800 in cash, and two of them made off together in a maroon SUV. Kirksey was taken into custody in April 2022 and played guilty of his role in the robbery early this week. Jones didn't make it on the lam quite as long. Two days after the robbery, Jones was in a Chevy Equinox, very specific sometimes, outside a Waffle House in St. Charles. Concerned patron heard what sounded like, quote, a female in distress in the Equinox. He was watching some good shit. Police arrived at the scene to find a female and Jones in anything but distress. They say... He was watching porn in the car, the source of the sounds that had raised the bystanders' alarm. Officers ran the plate the car, seeing that it was stolen. Asked Jones if he had any weapons. Jones, a convicted felon who was legally barred from possessing a firearm, said he had a gun on his hip. They seized the gun. The following April, the feds indicted Jones and Kirksey on robbery and using a gun the first for the crime. At the Waffle House? Did you kick the subwoofer in? I don't think that's what smothered and covered and (laughs) flippy flopped means, whatever their language is. I don't know what they say there. Uh, Scattered, smothered, covered, flip it up, rub it. You know, oh no. (laughs) Flap it down, oh no. Yeah, something like, yeah. (laughs) I, I... I is really you're in a stolen car and you're cranking up in the more. Waffle House parking in lot the Waffle with a House. legal gun. Like there's a word, and many, it means many things to many people, but it is one that we do still have in circulation, and that word is class. This is the opposite. Of that. Yeah. You are watching porn in the Waffle House parking lot. That's you're gonna want to go home and rethink some choices you've made. That is a rock bottom fucking moment. Quite that is one of those moments where you're that that's the part that's like the middle of your autobiography. That's the moment where you're like, (laughs) right? Before you turn it all around. Right, yeah. Why did you turn? Yeah. Why did you just use headphones? Or you like why? Who just? I shouldn't ask. Like you should who ask, just like yeah. watches porn in a public place? It's like it's. And I know people do. Yeah. I know, like when I worked at Starbucks, we had a guy on a laptop watching porn in the Starbucks. But I don't. I don't understand the behavior. I don't either. This is just, just, and worse, did the car stolen, you dipshit? And you have a gun you're not allowed to have. But you're like, nah, this is fine. Nobody's going to have a problem with this. What are they going to do? Call the cops? Also, like, how fucking loud did you have it that someone heard you from outside the car? And thought there was someone in trouble. It was that loud. Right. Like, do you, did you need it that loud? Like, maybe you need to get a hearing test while you're in jail. Just saying. Yeah. Get your ears checked and shit. All right. This last one is a lot of effort for very little reward and a whole lot of trouble. I'm sure you're familiar with this phenomenon that goes around. It still goes around today. Um, it was worse during the pandemic when uh, the prices of metal was way up, scrap metal. Um, the, the whole bit where if there's copper or if there's something else, like, people will strip the copper. Like the, the minute your back is turned, like especially during the, the well, back in the foreclosed, the, the subprime crisis, people, there were all these foreclosed yeah. houses around and people were just going to stripping out the, uh, the pipes and stuff. This is... Oh, God, how did you think this was? Go- this 
Thieves cut down radio broadcast tower in southeastern Oklahoma to steal $100 worth of copper. A hundred dollars. Look at the fuck. Yeah, that didn't seem worth it. Look at what the fuck they did. It's, it's, we're talking a radio broadcast tower. This thing is 488 feet. Radio station in southeastern Oklahoma is off the air after the owners say the thieves stole copper off the radio broadcast tower. It says they cut the cables off the uh, 488 foot tower to make it fall down and then cut it up to get the copper. Will Payne, the Payne Media Group, says the thieves probably caused half a million dollars worth of damage and only got away with about a hundred dollars worth of copper. Radio Tower for KITX near Hugo is still on the ground and in pieces. Um, uh, Payne said the, said the thieves cut up about 80 to 100 feet of copper and hauled it off. Payne says he's working on fixing the tower and getting back on the air, but he's frustrated thieves in this community. Um, yeah, he said he's going to the uh, Choctaw County Sheriff's Office as well as going to local scrapyards, see if he can get any information on the thieves. If you're dumb enough to do this, they are going to figure out where you got it from. Yeah. And scrapyards, it's not like in the fucking movies with no questions asked and they'll just take whatever. No, 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 no. That's accepting stolen goods and their asses could be right out of business. Yeah. It's it's not like the TV shows. They're going to but find... Also Maybe do a little word venture research and figure out if your felony is going to be worth it. A hundred. You, 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 you dropped five, half a million dollars worth of metal on the ground. And, or at least in, in damage just to get a hundred dollars worth of copper. Did you I even, mean, how hard do they have to look to find Elon? It's like his level of investment savvy, right? Right, right. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, just fucking... This was, like, you you know they were, like, Ocean's Elevening this shit. They, had, they thought this was the grand score. This was the granddaddy of them all. They were gonna, they, they were going to make out like bandits. They were, they were going to live like kings. All the copper in this thing. And they come out with like a hundred bucks. We're going to retire on this shit. You can't even buy a tire on this shit. Um, they Sorry. probably, uh, Illcaster the third, they probably thought it was worth more. I'm just, just one second. Just one second. Um, I have a phone, a smart phone, and I'm going to look up. Copper scrap exchange value. There we go. Um, and uh, yeah, it's right there. Yeah, I got the uh, uh, scrap price per U.S. dollar to pound. One dollar and sixty-two cents a pound. A dollar and sixty-two cents right there they probably thought it was you would if you're going to do this you maybe maybe google some shit and i know google doesn't fucking work yeah. anymore i know but just try put forth the effort maybe call someone and ask them who do you call to find that out i I honestly don't know. I don't. I guess you can call people. your local scrap metal yard. Yeah. I just, how much? Yeah. You can call and ask how much. Yeah. I mean, hey, there you I've go. Got some unused copper. What's it worth? Before you steal it. Before you, you cause half. Because that you see, one of the things about a crime is the more value, do, the higher the dollar value of damage you do. That stacks things. Yeah. They so go even though you only got a hundred dollars in your pocket. The crime is a half million dollar crime. I, can you just imagine the sound of that thing coming down? Like Jesus if you rob Christ. a casino, but you drop all the bags of money, they're still going to charge you yeah. for all the money you stole. That's how it works. Yeah. 
Guys, roughly, did you eat any louder? Roughly 61 pounds of copper, which seems like a lot of fucking effort to haul. That's a, that's heavy. Yeah, for a hundred bucks. He's fucking just... They're going to find you. You are so dumb. Even if you get away with it, it's not worth it. Because he's not only... Not only is it one of those instances where they're immediately going to know it happened because you took the radio station off the air. That's not one of those things like they have to wait a few days to figure out something. No, no, no. Right. Radio go bye bye. So, yes, this is the first thing we've learned. Maybe do a little cost benefit analysis before you go. Some rudimentary research would really save you so much heartache. Just for just 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 for a little bit of crime. Just for a little bit of crime. Just, just figure is hundred bucks. That's not even gonna pay your bail. Jesus Christ. Um, we have learned there is a time and a place for porn. And the Waffle House parking lot is not ever it. Never, ever. That is, that's unless you are filming a very specific genre of porn, I guess. <laughs> Maybe he was nostalgic for his conception. I don't know. Um, <laughs> we've learned that the lab can tell the difference between dog urine and human urine. You idiot. What are they going to do? Uh, we're sorry. To, uh, we're very sorry, but um, we think you may have worms. I mean, what the fuck? You're not on drugs, but you do have parvo? We just If you find a phone, like, we have found something more evil to do than steal the phone. Thank you for pioneering. Yeah, like I didn't even think about how many people have the little watches now. Mm-hmm. Like my sister is one of those. And every time, and I, I got to think that's got to be the most annoying shit ever because every yeah. time she gets a text, her phone goes off and then her watch goes off. Yeah. And well, I, how is that not maddening? This, this guy pioneering new depths of humanity. Good, good on you. You, you found your depravity has reached new lows. We've discovered that. It isn't illegal to tape fish to an ATM, but they'll certainly try to lock you up anyway. Yeah. That's that's just the, the A cab, everybody. A cab. And finally, we've learned that if you do try to walk out of the store with merchandise, they might not be able to tackle your butt, but they will call the cops. And you're kind of conspicuous when you have all of the water mugs in your car. Yeah, nobody gets that dehydrated. You're going to jail over cups. And the dumb part is, if you were going to resell them, like, bad bubbles burst. Eventually. Oh, yeah. And on it, it's it's dizzying how fast trends move now. Oh yeah, like it's insane how fast things are the new thing and over. So like by next week, the Stanley Cup will be over. What's the, and what's, if you haven't moved all of them, I have to look up what's the threshold for uh, grand theft. How much you actually have to steal? I feel like it's, I don't know. $2,000. I was going to say $10,000. $2,000. You, 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 you. And again, they said $2,500 worth of cups, 65 cups. I know. That's, I don't know what's more depressing. That's stupid. I don't know what's more depressing, that you stole 65 cups or they're worth two grand. For the price of those cups, that motherfucker better be the holy grail and give me eternal life. And, like, heal me if I get shot, like Sean Connery. 
Indiana. Let it go. 